with $2.6 billion of funding received from NASA, SpaceX's Crew Dragon has done extraordinary things. Since May 2020, Crew Dragon has successfully launched a total of 42 astronauts to the ISS, including 28 NASA astronauts and others on private missions. Furthermore, Crew Dragon has also put an end to the shameful dependence of the U.S. space industry on Russian Soyuz to ferry astronauts to and from orbit for nearly a decade. How can Crew Dragon attain such achievements? Let's unwrap the secret of the inside Crew Dragon capsule in today's episode. Firstly, in terms of size and capacity, the Crew Dragon offers significantly more space and comfort for astronauts compared to the Russian Soyuz and Boeing Starliner spacecraft. The Soyuz is notably small, with a habitable space in the descent module measuring just four cubic meters, accommodating only three passengers. From the crew's perspective, the Soyuz is cramped. Once strapped in, the astronauts' heels are nearly in contact with the buttocks. They are tied down to a form-fitting couch, making it difficult to move anything other than their arms. In contrast, the Crew Dragon with the capsule and trunk combined stands around 8, 1 meters tall and has a diameter of 4 meters. Its candy-white cone-shaped capsule offers 11 cubic meters of internal volume and provides seating for up to 7 astronauts considerably larger than the Soyuz. This increased space provides astronauts with more room to move and a more comfortable environment. Although NASA may not utilize more than four seats at a time for the commercial crew program, the Crew Dragon still boasts greater capacity compared to the Soyuz. How about Boeing's Starliner? The Starliner capsule is characterized by its silver color and somewhat squat, broad-based cone shape, offering 11 cubic meters of space. It's designed to autonomously transport four NASA crew members and scientific researchers to the ISS. Despite providing the same internal volume as the Starliner capsule, the Crew Dragon is more elongated and more convenient than the Starliner. Its astronaut-specific amenities include four big windows, an advanced avionics computer system, and touchscreen displays, including controls for interior temperature, which can be set from 18 to 27 degrees Celsius and of course seat. Obviously, many astronauts enjoyed the convenience inside Crew Dragon. According to NASA astronaut and pilot Megan MacArthur, who went into the ISS on SpaceX's spacecraft during the Crew 2 mission, the ride was really smooth. We couldn't have asked for anything better. Another astronaut, Thomas Pesquet, who accompanied MacArthur, was also fired up. The write-up was fantastic. As you can see, it's pretty roomy, he said, adding, the inside is very comfy and we feel very well protected. It was a lovely ride. It was the softest docking I've ever felt. Well, Crew Dragon is really a great choice for a comfortable long journey, isn't it? So if you were chosen for space exploration, which spacecraft would you opt for? I think you already have the answer, right? Furthermore, not only does Dragon's design outclass Starliner and Soyuz, but even its technology also gives a big humiliation to those spaceships. Boeing's technology, frankly, hasn't changed much over the decades. In contrast, SpaceX's Crew Dragon boasts an advanced heat shield that supports faster re-entry speeds, potentially extending its operations beyond LEO to the ISS. Although we hope Boeing will eventually succeed, their current capabilities are limited to just two launches annually using a disposable rocket system that incorporates parts from the old space shuttle. Meanwhile, SpaceX has completely overhauled its rockets and the Crew Dragon capsule by re-engineering previous designs and significantly enhancing them with modern technology, materials, and interfaces. Specifically, a notable feature of the Dragon is its interior touchscreens, meticulously crafted not only for functionality, but also with user experience at the forefront. In contrast, NASA's earlier capsules like Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo were reminiscent of airplane cockpits, featuring sheet metal instrument panels adorned with numerous switches, dials, lights, and analog gags. These capsules utilized simple onboard computers operated via mechanical keyboards, with the commander navigating much like piloting a plane, using a control stick to manage velocity, altitude, and direction. The Dragon's designer swept all that away, replacing everything with three large touchscreens facing four side-by-side -side seats. Each screen is capable of calling up as many as 10 sets of displays, allowing the crew to focus on a particular set of systems, including guidance, environmental, electrical, and more. As for the Soyuz, it remains externally similar to its design from over 55 years ago, virtually unchanged since 1967. In addition, when comparing the thrusters integrated into the Dragon's capsule to Soyuz's rescue system, some drawbacks of the latter become apparent. 
Soyuz relies on an escape tower powered by a solid rocket motor which is disposable. Meanwhile, the Dragon's capsule can be reused up to 15 times, making its cost per launch significantly cheaper than that of Soyuz. Moreover, the Dragon employs hypergolic or liquid-fueled rocket engines, similar to those used in reaction control systems, ensuring quick and reliable ignition despite being highly toxic. These fuels remain stable in space and endure multiple day-night heating and cooling cycles when docked at the ISS unlike solid rocket motor fuel, which can become unstable under such conditions. In addition, the surprisingly cheap price also makes the Dragon brand. Roscosmos's latest seat price is steep at $90.3 million. Despite Starliner not having launched yet, it's important to evaluate both current prices and anticipated inflation increases. SpaceX's ticket price at $75 million, according to a 2019 NASA Office of Inspector General report, presents substantial savings compared to Boeing's Starliner, Boeing's expected ticket price of $90 million, adjusted for inflation, would be about $100 million higher than Roscosmos's rate. Thus, choosing SpaceX could save taxpayers around $100 million per flight compared to Boeing's rates. As a result, NASA has opted to purchase more flights from SpaceX in 2021 and 2022, given their proven track record and cost-effectiveness. Nevertheless, Crew Dragon has impressed astronauts not only with the aforementioned advantages, but also with its safety record and reliability. Since Crew Dragon has been operational, it has exceeded even the Russian Soyuz vehicle in terms of the total number of people flown into space during that period. Over the last two years, Dragon has had a few flaws, including an intermittently problematic toilet and a lagging parachute on one flight. But NASA officials have been extremely pleased with the vehicle's performance. This is probably the safest vehicle astronauts have ever launched on, said former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine. It has safely returned the United States' capability of human spaceflight, which had been lost since the space shuttle's retirement. And if Dragon had not been available, NASA would have been in the uncomfortable position of relying on Russia. This statement not only implies an end to the dependence of the U.S. space industry on Russia for nearly 10 years, but also proves astronauts' credibility on Dragon. Recently, Crew Dragon has also marked its 11th crewed mission since its first launch in May 2020. The docking process of the Crew Dragon to the ISS went smoothly without any issues. When journeying to the ISS, the SpaceX vehicle autonomously docks with the orbiting outpost, eliminating the need for manual guidance by humans. Doe Hurley, the commander of the first crew SpaceX mission, remarked that both he and his colleague were struck by how seamless the docking was, noting that they didn't even feel it occur. Upon completion of their mission, the Crew Dragon undocks from the space station and initiates a deorbit burn using its thrusters. Following re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, the spacecraft deploys four parachutes to slow its descent. Finally, the Crew Dragon lands in the Atlantic Ocean, approximately 450 km off the coast of Florida, where recovery ships are stationed to retrieve the astronauts and the capsule, ensuring their safety. This unique capability of the Crew Dragon is a significant advantage, making it a preferred choice for astronauts over any other spacecraft. In addition, the spacesuits have become a crucial factor in making astronauts feel safe and comfortable when they are in the Crew Dragon. The sleek, customized outfits contrast with previous designs, but their main purpose remains the same, to protect crew members from depressurization, where the air is lost from the capsule. According to Chris Trigg, spacesuits and crew equipment manager at SpaceX, the suit is really one part of the bigger Dragon system. Think of it as a suit seat system. Crew Dragon has three different seat sizes with foam that's molded around the astronaut's body to make the journey to and from space as comfortable as possible. On the other hand, we do not yet know if NASA's astronauts feel the same when they sit inside the Starliner because this vehicle has yet to launch with astronauts aboard at the time I made this report, even though NASA has reportedly spent nearly $5 billion on Boeing to develop the CST-100 Starliner for the commercial crew program for over 10 years. Meanwhile, Crew Dragon, operating with significantly less funding and only half the time, has achieved considerable success and become NASA's powerful right hand. Faced with the remarkable achievements of SpaceX's Crew Dragon, NASA, an agency with over a half century of history, was outperformed by a 22-year-old company that was ridiculed from its early days. Imagine how shameful NASA would be. It's a harsh race of space exploration, however, 
it's too soon to acclaim the final winner. That wraps up today's episode. Please feel free to share your feedback in the comments section. Your feedback is very important to help us make better videos. Thank you for tuning in and see you in the next episode.